Hello Raven coin lovers and uh, welcome to Raven Rebels video about how to sign in using Ravencoin NFTs, how to sign into websites. And this is a dev video, it's for developers. Uh, we're talking about development here. So uh, get yourself a cup of coffee or a tea, whatever you like, and let's spend like 20 minutes together. And we will check out the demo pro project that we have uh, online. Uh, how to sign in and we will check out the code how we built that stuff and you will get all the knowledge you need to set it up yourself and Raven Rebels is setting up an identity provider which means that it's an online service that will facilita facilitate and help others build um, to activate NFTs, Ravencoin NFT sign-ins to their web apps. Let's get started. So uh, first off we have a uh, online demo called uh, demo ravencoin web app heroku and we have a github uh, project for this one so if you go to github raven rebels you will find demo site with ravencoin authentication and here you have all the code that's needed to run this one so first off we can show uh, i can show you what it looks like so you say so okay I want to sign in. How do you do that? Well, I click sign in and as a user, I'm now redirected away from this site to the identity provider, Raven Rebels, uh, where it asks me, do you want to sign this message? Yes. And I type in the name of my NFT. So I get instructed that with this address, I have to sign this message. And then um, the most basic way, how do you do it? Well, you open up Raven Core Wallet and you click sign message. You enter the address and you enter the message. Then you can sign the message and you get a signature. We copy the signature. We go back to the web app, paste in the signature and voila, we are authenticated. Now we are back to the demo website which says hello friend wonderland and it shows our uh, IPFS uh, image photo and that's it. That's it. So let's walk through the code. Let's dive into the code and see how this is done. So to play around with this one, I can close that. Uh, as I said, go to demo site with Ravencoin authentication under Raven Rebels at GitHub and here you have all the instructions. And it's quite a good readme file here, it's telling you the steps, because there are like three steps. One, uh, the, your website will have to create an authentication order with the identity provider. Two, you will start polling, uh, or you pull the state, state status, so you start polling. And after a while, when the user is successfully authenticated, you can welcome your user. That's it. And you have lots of in-depth uh, fancy fancy documentation here if you want to see like exactly what the response looks like and, and stuff. But let's get started. So we follow the instructions. First off, we have to clone this repository. So uh, we are on uh, Windows here. So we create a, uh, a folder in the temp the demo. And we paste in this clone stuff. La la, now we cloned all the code. So here we have the code. Step Next step is to build the project. So we run npm install to do, install all the dependencies. And as you understand now, we are, um, you need to have node.js and npm installed for this to work. And you need to have a git client and so on. Now we have installed the, the uh, dependencies. Uh, next step is to run the server. So now we run the server locally. So we should be able to go to localhost and see the site. Let's go, localhost. La la, it's here. Let's run it again to see that it works. And we log in with friend wonderland. We have the message, uh, the, no, sorry, the, the address, and uh, we have the message, we sign, we take the signature, and we are authenticated. 
works. So now it works and we are locally playing around now. So let's look at how this uh, product is built. Since we have Visual Studio Code installed, we can type uh, code followed by dot, which will open Visual Studio Code in the current directory. Very nice. And you can see in the file structure that we have server.js. It's about uh, 100 lines of code. So let's start with the server and then we end with the graphical user interface. So the server uses Express, very popular uh, web framework for Node, and it uses something called Express Session. And Express Session is a npm package with more than one million uh, downloads per um, uh, per week. That's nice. There's a bug in npm, so now it doesn't show us the uh, the um, readme file. Very strange. I don't know why that is. No. Nope. It says no readme. It does have a readme file. I see this all the time. I don't know why. Anyway, we can go to here. And you can see that uh, to use this um, session, there's some uh, example code here. So we just have taken this sample code and pasted it in. Uh, so here you see we create the app and then we set, create some sort of a session secret stuff and we do this. So now we have a session for user session. The next milestone is that we uh, declare for Express that our static content, our web content is located in the folder called public. Here we have public and it contains just a very simple uh, HTML file. Uh, some style CSS and then a app.js file which is 100 lines with a lot of comments so maybe 70 80 lines of JavaScript code that's it all you need and you say that uh, we declare this root route uh, sign in step one uh, which uh, from this local server it's um, sign in step one means that it goes to the identity provider and it creates a order um, authentication order and then it has a function or route root called authenticated because the web client will ask its server say am i authenticated or not am i authenticated or not and when it finally is authenticated we will update the user session with the information we get from the identity provider and we consider the user to be authenticated so uh, if we Go back to uh, our little local host here and uh, we open up the developer tools and we uh, reload the page. In this case, no, we, okay, so we, <laughs> we closed it down. Uh, so we start again and this time I will use the Ravencoin sign message extension because it's a lot faster. So we use the extension, create the signature, and we are logged. Uh -huh. Copy. Like that. And we are logged in. And now you can see in the network uh, traffic here that it, it first it created step one. Like uh, our web client asked the server on step one and got this uh, response back and then it started to ask and like authenticated every two seconds and the response from our little server was false you are not authenticated yet and the very last okay, authenticated uh, call request we said yes you are authenticated and here is some data and you see uh, that our server responds with uh, uh, metadata about the uh, nft it uh, responds with um, the name of the NFT and the message and, and the signature and stuff. <coughs> so that's the flow of it. Let's go back to the code. So we see that uh, step one was just, uh, we sent a request to the identity provider to create an order. It's just, a, an, you send an, a JSON object with two attributes. You send the message that the user should sign in but it must be base 64 encoded 
So you make you create the message and you encode it using base64. And be sure that your message should be very, very uh, relevant, uh, both time and place. So you say, uh, log in to my NFT marketplace, or whatever. And this is the date. So it's easy for me as an end user to see that, hold on, this is an old date. I will not sign this one. I don't trust this one. Or if you go to a site that says that it's another site, I mean... I will not sign a message if you say that, are you going to sign into facebook.com? So no, I am not. So on. So you create a relevant message, you uh, encode it in base64, and you will get back the authentication order. And all you also get... So this was the first step, step one. When we contacted um, the identity provider, we got... Um, we got back the end user URL, so we could uh, tell the client to open. We could open up this web page for the client, so the client, me in this case, could um, finish the authentication process. So this is step one, and authenticated. The next function that the server has, um, same thing. I mean, either you are, um, if you are not authenticated yet. Because we have not, when you authenticate, we update the user session. If your user session does not have user info, it means that it's not authenticated. Then our little local server goes to the identity provider and checks the status. If the status uh, is complete, then we update the user information in the session. That's it. Very simple. So let's now. Uh, go from server to client, so the graphical user interface. Let's check out the web client. Very, very simple HTML form, like very simple. If we sign out, if you look at the code, it's like nothing. And it, so it will only import some style sheets and the JavaScript file. The style sheet, nothing fancy fancy. Uh, if you want to, you can like, le let's change background. So, boom, so nice. Just simple CSS. And the logic is of course located here in app.js. And as we say in this disclaimer, this is just a proof of concept demo project, right? So we have done, we have written it to be as uh, easy to understand as possible. So we are only going for pure vanilla JavaScript. No React, no Angular, no Vue, no nothing. No library, no framework. Nothing fancy fancy, just pure vanilla JavaScript. And from the client perspective, it's like the client handles two different scenarios. Like either you are anonymous or you are authenticated. You cannot be authenticated and anonymous, and you cannot be <laughs> anonymous and authenticated. You are either anonymous or authenticated. So the code starts by declaring a function that will pull the status. Uh, every two seconds, it will um, ask the server, am I logged in or not? Am I logged in or not? And when we uh, invoke the script the first time, when you load the page, the first thing we do is to call our anonymous function. And the anonymous function will create an order ref. And when that is done, it will start polling for status. And what we do when we poll for status? We, well, we ask for authenticated status, blah, blah, blah. We get some data. And then, of course, if we say that, okay, we are authenticated, then we call the authenticated function. And the first thing the authenticated function does is, of course, to clear this interval. We should now stop asking for, um, we should now stop um, polling the status because now we are already authenticated. So you don't have to ask you every two seconds. And if we go down again to, to uh, the anonymous, you see that's uh, three or four or five lines of JavaScript. Yes, the, the heading and a link. That's what you see here, a heading and a link. And if you are authenticated, let's authenticate real fast. If you are authenticated,
then we will show this one. And it's also very simple. It's just a heading, image, and a logout button. So this is what happens if you are anonymous, and this is what happens if you are authenticated. So we welcome you, and we show it. We add a image tag element to the page, and the sign out button, and then. With script, we will check, okay, do we have the IPFS hash or not? If we have that, then we set the source attribute of the image. And we add a um, event listener to the bottom. The sign out button. Button. So you can log out. That's basically it. So now you have your code. You have seen how it works. You can play around with this if you think that it's, that it's fun. Uh, the identity provider is not like really not, not even in beta yet. So this is just for educational purposes. You can play around. You can start learning. Uh, it's kind of rock solid. It works like really good. But but be don't go full production mode yet because we don't have uh, support and stuff up and running. Uh, so now we have looked at the code uh, the next thing we can talk about is how you uh, as you've seen you can sign messages in multiple ways in ravencore you can use the ravencore wallet nice but not everyone is running around with desktops with full-blown wallets all the time that is why that is why we set up this um, extension and you can find this extension at uh, chrome web store Ravencoin sign message. You search for Ravencoin sign message and you find it. This is Raven Rebels uh, sign message extension for Ravencoin. And it has da -da, 17 users. <laughs> and that's so cool because this shows how early we are. We're so early when it comes to Ravencoin. My lord, we are just getting ready to start building stuff because mass adoption of users will come after a massive amounts of developer have built a massive amounts of stuff so we make developers build stuff and when we have stuff the users will come because then you get real life um, use cases uh, realized implemented uh, and uh, so we are really really early 17 users i love it uh, so you have this sign uh, extension and this extension you import a private key that private key will be um, saved in your web browser's uh, local storage, which means that it's only safe if you fully control your computer. Do not do this on other people's computers <coughs> or computers that are controlled by other people. No one is touching my computer, so it's safe. <laughs> and a quick tip is that you can go to ravencoin.org slash bip44 where you can generate uh, mnemonics like uh, wallets. So you can just click generate and you get your mnemonic key and you can uh, save this, back this up, uh, take a note of it. And then you scroll down and you say, okay, the very first address for this wallet is this private key. Then you can take this private key and you can uh, import that into your Ravencoin extension. So that's what, what I do when I play around. Um, and also you can, you can send some fun uh, NFT that you play around with, like, uh, like for me, as I showed you this uh, Wunderla, uh, this uh, NFT here, it's like, uh, I don't mind. It's just something I play around with. So, and I've done that. I've got, I, I went to, uh, here and I created a, a like paper wallet a mnemonic and I uh, sent a NFT to this address. I have imported the private key to this extension and I've also imported this private key to my uh, existing um, wallet. So I have it in the wallet as well. So that's a fun thing. In the future, we are, we are working on authenticate, uh, Ravencoin Authenticator, which will be an iPhone Android web app where you like import your mnemonic key. It's like more like a full-blown wallet viewer where you can just scan QR codes and log in. That will make it so much easier. But this demo, this video was about making you as a developer to get you started. Like how can you build, um, how can you work with this uh, demo site with Ravencoin authentication. So please clone it, uh, download it, 
install it, run with it. If you have any question, reach out, questions, reach out to tweet on Twitter uh, to Raven Rebels. And if you like this video, as always, uh, please drop a comment, uh, share it and, and like it. And uh, stay safe out there. Bye.